right, guys, uh, we'll get started real soon. Okay, um, I think I shared this, um, I think today, earlier today and sometime two days ago, talking about um, doing a video, doing a Facebook Live to share with you guys a little bit more about the silver trade uh, or more specifically the SLB trade that I took. Um, good, right? Uh, hi, Zheng Yan. Um, good to see you. Um, Cool. Uh, I think there are many, many different avenues and of course sources you can learn more about FX. Uh, from time to time, I do post quite a bit of stuff uh, regarding trading the currency market as well. I hope that helps your journey. Okay. Um, cool. Um, nice to see you, right? Um, but today I'll, I'll talk very specifically on a, a trade that I took. Uh, and of course, uh, this little trick and technique over here uh, is where you guys once you have this knowledge, you'll be able to apply it um, in the, the other pairs as well, which I'll share with you more uh, in details as we go along. Okay, so um, we'll get started real soon. Let me share this out as well. Okay. Good. All right, so... Um, We'll get started real soon. Let me just share this to one more group so that the community will able to see this. All right, so good. Um, it's not going to be a very long Facebook Live, a very casual one that I wanted to share the idea on why we traded the silver trade. Okay, so because uh, a lot of people, when they do um, commodities trading, right, when we talk about precious metal, uh, the number one thing that comes to mind is gold. Okay, um, which is the in terms of uh, forex or, or MT four is the XAU US dollar, um, but most of the time people miss out on the alternative, which is silver. Okay, and uh, today is where I want to emphasize on this topic on how to actually select uh, a particular instrument when you have multiple ones that are more or less similar and they are correlated, right? So, for example, in the in the commodities market, precious metal, you have gold and silver both are correlated, okay? And of course, in the currency market, you have like euro and pound closely correlated, um, Australia and New Zealand closely correlated as well. Okay? And of course, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen, they are closely correlated, okay? And uh, during this situation, how can we select the um, better one, okay? Uh, and the one that will provide you with much more opportunity. Cool, right? So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so um, the first thing here I want to share is, uh, of course, to go through the silver chart first, okay? Uh, I specifically, uh, in terms of the trade, is actually on SLV, okay? Uh, which is actually a silver ETF. Uh, I didn't trade silver directly, but I traded the SLV. Uh, the ETF, simply because uh, I'm looking at this as a long-term trade, okay? Uh, and um, likely into an investment as well. Uh, and for that reason, I wouldn't want to trade and open a position in uh, CFD because then every day overnight, um, the broker will charge me a fee. Okay, And that's, that's going to affect my psychology, right? Which I'll talk a little bit more in this video as well. So I decided to go into SLV, which is um, there's no commission for overnight. Okay, And uh, I won't be affected. I can hold that trade as long as the profit continue running. Okay, um, but let me show you the big picture on silver first, right? So I was spotting, I was kind of like really focusing on this uh, commodity here, the precious metal commodity uh, since the earlier of this year. Okay, I think around February, March period, that's where we already started looking at this uh, for one very simple reason, okay? Because of COVID-19, uh, because of the whole financial market goes into panic, okay? That's a risk off, number one, okay? So first factor here is risk off environment, um, precious metal like your gold and silver is likely going to be appreciating. The price is likely going to be supported. Okay, and number two, one, uh, the fundamental major factor here is that the Fed has went into unlimited QE, which means that they keep printing money, right? Uh, and if the Fed keeps printing money, then um, the US dollar will likely weaken. And when that weakens, then relative to silver, because silver and gold are traded against the US dollar. So if the value of the dollar drops, then um, naturally that will also push the silver and gold price up. Okay, So these are the two real major factors that um, led me to focus on these two commodities, right? gold and silver, of course. Okay? And uh, let me bring you back. Uh, this is a weekly chart, right? So let me bring you back to the period where uh, we had our last 
previous financial crisis. Okay, and of course that is back in 2008, 2009, that's your subprime mortgage that happens in US, right? So when that happened, you can see the first reaction is of course, um, it went down, right? So both silver and gold actually went down the very first instant when that uh, bubble burst, right? That, that whole financial crisis got started. But after that, because when this crisis happened back in 2008, um, same thing, the Fed started printing money, right? The, start, uh, the Fed starts to do a lot of quantitative easing uh, and that weakens that US dollar eventually because when fundamental eventually kicks in, uh, that's where the dollar weakens significantly. And when that happened, you can see since 2009 onwards, um, silver, okay, specifically here, uh, if I bring you the lines, right? Okay, uh, from somewhere around the low of close to $9, right? It rallied all the way back up to close to $48, okay? Uh, and that happens, of course, not in uh, a short span of time, but it happens from 2009, 2010 to 2011, okay? And because of that reason, okay, that fundamental perspective of weakening of dollar, okay, uh, we might see that in th this year as well, okay? And that's why, uh, that's one of the very, very major reason why I'm focusing on uh, gold and silver when um, this crisis happened and when the Fed decides to do uh, quantitative easing, okay? So um, that's the whole idea of why we're looking at gold and silver. So if I bring you to the gold chart, um, actually it's, it's the same thing, right? If I go back to 2009, um, 2008, okay, so you can see over here as well, 2008, it dropped, okay, and of course, um, from the low of 2008, um, that's around $700, okay, it went up all the way close to 1900 which is $1,900, okay, and uh, if you look at that right now, um, of course, gold has already tagged that high, okay, um, but silver, if I go back to that silver chart, right, silver actually has still a lot of room to go up to the previous high of around $48, okay? So immediately when I look at these two charts, okay, gold and silver, uh, what I saw was that there's a lot of room for silver to run to the upside, but for gold, it's pretty much limited, okay? Relative compared to the highs that were developed back in 2009, okay, that 2009 run, um, silver has a lot of upside opportunity and potential for it to run, uh, but Gold is slightly limited, okay? So that already tell me that between gold and silver, um, naturally, right, between gold and silver, then silver will be a much better option because there's much room for it to run, okay? So for that reason, then I went and focused into SLV, okay? And uh, over here, just to share with you that um, I'm currently holding on two position, okay? Uh, of course, I'm not actively adding right now, um, but eventually if I have opportunity, I'll add on another position. Um, that's this technique here, when I add on to my witness is called scale in, okay? So in other words, I'm actually still putting the same amount of risk, but I'm potentially increasing my profit, okay? Uh, multiple folds, okay? So let me bring you back to um, the very first trade I took back in the early May, okay? Early May. So uh, this is where the technical comes in. Okay, so I actually use, uh, for those of you who are familiar with me, right, I use technical analysis to enter my trade uh, and the methodology that I use is based on Elliott Wave principle. Okay, so what I've established is from the sentiment perspective, the fundamental perspective uh, that gold and silver is likely going to rally. Okay, and from there, I came on onto the chart to look for technical entries. Okay, um, so usually I look at one hour, four hour to actually execute my trade on a four hour chart. Okay, so just to show you over here, okay, this is at where I first entered. Okay, so if you saw my screenshot sharing on Facebook, um, I entered this position on early May. Okay, so that's close to uh, May, June, July. Uh, that's close to three months back. Um, very simple technical entry, okay? Nothing fanciful is really just an impulse push to the upside, which means momentum is going up. And I saw this little correction here, okay, which means price is taking a break. Uh, and eventually when I see this kind of setup, this kind of formation, I know, right, um, that's about 60 to 70% of the time it will continue higher. And that's the reason why I just put an entry here and uh, it went higher, okay? So that was my very first trade and uh, it was very easy to manage simply because it almost instantly, it just went up very fast in a very short span of time. I can reduce my risk and uh, it becomes a risk-free trade, 
okay? And uh, of course, in June, what I saw next is price just continue to consolidate. So again, after every impulse move, you would expect price to take a break, okay? It can't just keep going, going, going. It needs to eventually stop and pause, and then after that, continue. Okay, so from there, uh, it start to consolidate again. And then I saw, okay, this is another time for me to add another position in. And uh, that's where my second trade went in, around $16.80. Um, that's early June or July, right? Late, uh, sorry, late June, uh, early July. So that's about one month ago. Uh, and right now, if I bring you to where the chart is at the moment, okay, um, it has went up again as an impulse move. Right. So again, every time I see an impulse move like that, um, I, I won't be so just so excited because I know then um, the next likely going to happen is a correction. Okay. Which means perhaps for the next maybe one month or maybe two to three weeks, right? That period of time, um, likely silver is just going to go back into consolidation. Okay. Um, of course, uh, I will monitor then whether I can add in another trade or if this is not going to be consolidation and we're going to see maybe a more major reversal. Okay. Then I'll manage my two running trades and maybe close it off with a profit. Okay. So this is a little bit background and the uh, backdrop as to, you know, why and how I executed the current two trades that are running. Okay. So let me just remove all those drawings first. Okay. Um, let me do that. Okay. And uh, over here, I want to show you in terms of SLV, right? From the long-term perspective, uh, what is happening right now, okay? Uh, on the big picture, right? So this is on a weekly chart, okay? So rather similar to XAG, which is silver, okay? But uh, because I'm trading SLV, right? So I would take reference from directly from this chart here, SLV, okay? So this is again, uh, based on technical analysis, right? This pattern here, for those of you who are familiar, Okay, um, following us for some time, you know this is what we call a crawl pattern. Um, and every time we see a crawl pattern, uh, we know the reversal is likely going to happen, right? 60 to 70% of the time is going to reverse to the upside whenever we see a crawl pattern like that. Um, and right now, it has come, come over here. It has break past this key level around the $20.50, um, which is where it will be a very good take profit level to put, okay? But of course, of the fundamental reason that I had, okay? And looking back at what happened in 2008, 2009, um, I'm actually not looking to, to take profit here, but I'm looking to take profit all the way back up, okay? This high here, which is around the $48. Okay, we are halfway there, right? We are halfway there. Uh, but I also need to acknowledge that we have hit this level here, which means that price can obviously reverse Okay, so I need to monitor. Okay, so that's some thoughts um, and update on what uh, I'm going to look out for right now in silver. Okay, now uh, for those of you who are not yet in the gold trade or the silver trade, right? Um, this is the point of time. Uh, this, this is going to be the period where you're going to see a lot of posting on um, news article, headlines, social media, talking about while wow, gold is going to, it broke some significant level, it's going to continue high and things like that. Okay, um, for those of you who are very new to trading, right? Usually when you see this kind of headlines article happening uh, on social media, on Bloomberg and things like that, okay, um, it's usually too late, which means that it has already happened and uh, therefore these news are coming out, okay? And for those of you who are very new and not experienced, um, that's where your FOMO kicks in, okay? Which stands for fear of missing out. Uh, and this article are really driving people uh, who are very new, Okay, to, to be afraid of missing this move and immediately they jump into it. Okay, and that's the mistake that you wouldn't want to, to commit to. Okay, so if you're not in the gold trade and silver trade and uh, you're still fairly new to trading, okay, don't let this kind of headlines news um, overly entice you. Okay, um, the opportunities are always there in the market. Okay, so uh, doesn't mean that you miss this move, then you can't make money in other instruments. No, there are many opportunities in the market. Okay, so this is a, a slight warning and tip, okay, um, especially for those of you who are very new. If you are not in this move yet, be patient, okay? So I also, of course, share with you um, in this video as we progress along, right, um, what are some of the things you want to monitor uh, to continue riding on this move it's, if it's going to happen, okay? So this is a little bit backdrop into how, what I'm seeing right now, okay, um, with the potential of this going all the way back up to $48, 
Okay. So now let me share with you why also is it so important to select kind of like um, the right pair, right? So between gold and silver, uh, why if you trade a gold, you, you wouldn't have profit as much as silver. Okay. So again, both of it went up quite significantly, right? But obviously one went up way more than the other. Okay. And let me just show you over here what is the difference. Okay, so in, instead of me telling you, you know, it's diff, it's important and things like that, I want to, I want you to see it for yourself. Okay, so let me bring you back. Uh, this is on the daily chart, right? So I'm gonna use a tool over here to share with you uh, and show you in the calculation of percentage how much has price increased, okay, from a certain date. Okay, so let me take the, the same date reference, right? So I entered this trade on, let's say the 8th of May. Okay, so we're gonna take the date here, 8th of May, okay, which is around the price of $14.90, uh, $14.39 on SLB. Okay, so let's see uh, as of today, right? Before the market opens right now, that was the closing price that we had. Um, I'm seeing that today it might come back down a little bit, okay? But let's just take it from yesterday's closing price, okay? You can see from then to now, uh, the price over here, you can see over here, 58.97%, which is close to 59%, okay? So in other words, SLV price from the 8th of May to yesterday closing, the price actually increased by 59%, okay? Now let's take a look at gold, right? So gold here is GLD, that's the ETF of gold. Okay, so same thing. Uh, I'm gonna take the price of eight of me, which is uh, somewhere here. Okay, that's the price of eight of me, to where it is right now, um, based on yesterday closing. Okay, now take a look at this. Right, you can see here from from this price. If I put in a line, right, from this price here all the way to yesterday high closing, the increment of it is only fourteen percent. Okay. So yes, both of it went up significantly, okay? But one GLD over here only went up by 14%, okay? But you can see SLV, the change in price is actually close to 59, okay? And that's a huge difference, right? So imagine if today you, you never leverage, okay? Both of it, you enter with the same sizing. One trade, you actually made about 14% and the other trade, you made close to 60%, okay? And that's why it's so important to select if you have two options right now to select it, okay? And the main objective of me sharing over here is to also give you and provide you this little trick and technique so that you can apply it um, whether you're trading the currency market or in the future, you're trading some instruments that are closely correlated, okay? So now this trick here is to look at the ratio between the two very closely correlated uh, instrument. So in this case, we are looking at gold and silver, okay? So you want to look at the ratio between gold and silver, right? And in this case here, we call this the gold-silver ratio. So if you're on trading view, uh, the ticker, the symbol to key in is actually XAUXAG, okay? So you can see on the right over here, XAUXAG. Um, if you click that, uh, type it in, that's actually the gold-silver ratio, okay? So it's actually just a formula taking gold price, um, putting it against silver price, and um, map a chart out of it, okay? Really that simple, nothing fanciful about it. But this here is very, very useful because you'll be able to see between gold and silver, which one is relatively stronger, which one is relatively weaker, okay? So uh, this doesn't tell us the direction per se, but it's gonna tell us which one is stronger, which one is weaker. Okay. Now, if I go back to the daily chart and uh, you can see over here, this is the daily movement of gold-silver ratio. Okay. And for those of you who are familiar with the, the technical analysis method that we apply to forecast the market, this pattern shouldn't be foreign, right? So it's an impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse. Okay, so every time we see something like this, we expect it to drop. Okay, every time we see something like this, we expect it to drop. Right, so back then, in early May, right? So that's the part where I entered the trade, right? Where is it? It's somewhere around here, okay? 4th of May, this white line is actually 4th of May. And what I saw was this is forming an impulse correction, okay? So back then, it looks something like this, okay? Without 
without the chart that's developed yet. Back then, it looks like that. So what I saw here is on this gold-silver ratio chart, this is telling me impulse correction. I'm expecting this to come. So if gold-silver as a ratio is going to drop, right? In other words, if both of it is going to strengthen, silver needs to strengthen more than gold. Okay, why? Because it's a ratio. Okay, so again, um, if this is XAG, sorry, XAU, XAG, right? It's a ratio. Okay, so for this ratio here to draw, okay, uh, the denominator needs to be way bigger than the numerator. Okay, so a bit of ratio and fraction over here. Okay, so when I know this, then I know, okay, between XAU and XAG, then if it's going to increase, then XAG is going to increase way more than XAU. Why? Because this chart here, this ratio chart tells me that there's a high chance this is going to go down. And for the ratio to drop, okay, the denominator needs to be increasing way bigger than the numerator. And the denominator here is silver. Okay? So again, this stack up to the probability of why I'm actually emphasizing and focusing on silver compared to gold. Okay, I'm not saying that gold is a bad choice, but between both, if I'm going to focus on one and I want to choose one, then silver becomes a very natural choice. Okay, uh, And for those of you who actually understand uh, the fundamental intrinsic value between gold and silver, then you will know that um, there's actually no production value of gold, or I would say a very low production value of gold, uh, but silver, that is the industrial production value. Okay, which means that gold, what do you use like uh, use it for mainly? Uh, maybe a little bit of jewelry and uh, you know, a lot of them are stalled in banks, right? As um, asset, safe haven asset. But silver is different because silver, there's a usage in the industry. So that's what I meant by uh, the fundamental intrinsic value. Okay, so that also stacks up to the reason as to if today I want to invest in a precious metal, uh, I would likely invest in silver because of that reason as well. Okay. So all this add up to why uh, between gold and silver, I choose silver. Okay. So um, right now you can see this is how the gold silver ratio, ratio charts looks like. Okay. Um, right now over here, it again starts to form some, for, some sort of consolidation. Okay. In other words, when this consolidate, this ratio consolidate, naturally what it means is that both gold and silver is not going to have some clear winner and uh, likely they are also going to consolidate. Okay, so um, this is a little tip okay, for you guys, um, hopefully it helps, okay? And let me bring you to the application of some of the very common instruments that you can trade as well and use this concept here, right? Now, if you're very familiar with currency, you would know that um, Australia and New Zealand, they are both very closely correlated, okay? And uh, you shouldn't be foreign with this currency pair here called uh, Aussie New Zealand, right? So Aussie Kiwi, Okay, again, is acting quite similar to the concept of gold-silver ratio. Okay, so if today you want to trade Australia and New Zealand, um, and you would like to pick one, okay, then you can use this chart here called the Aussie Kiwi to kind of see which pair, whether is it going to be the Australia or the New Zealand that you want to focus on. Okay, now let's take a look at this, right? Just put very simple analysis into the, into the market. Okay, um, as of now, okay, we're going to keep it simple for this video here, right? Okay, um, just based on this analysis, you can see this is a very strong move to the upside right now. It's consolidating, okay? So again, based on just this principle um, pattern over here, there's a very high chance this is going to continue to the upside, okay? Now, let's assume that, you know, um, Australia New Zealand is going to go up, right? So again, if you look at this as a fraction, as a ratio, Australia against New Zealand, okay? If this ratio is going to go up, then what it means is that if both Australia and New Zealand is going to strengthen, then Australia needs to strengthen more than your New Zealand, okay? Because if both are going to strengthen, then obviously your numerator needs to strengthen, the number needs to increase way more than your denominator, right? Then we need this whole ratio can go up, okay? So again, if you are looking to buy the risk currency like Australia and New Zealand, okay, then naturally Australia becomes a better option, okay? Uh, and of course, if 
flip side, right? If you're looking to sell the Australia or New Zealand and you want to pick one, then looking at this case here, then of course, if you're selling it, then New Zealand will be, re will be, will be the focus, right? Why? Because it's going to be weaker relative to Aussie. Okay. So this technique, um, this little trick here is, um, very, is, is something additional that you can actually apply to help you filter uh, and choose right, which currency you want to focus on. Uh, the other one is actually the Euro pound, okay? because uh, between Euro and the pound, they are also quite closely correlated. Okay? And uh, keeping this very simple again, this analysis here, this is an impulse, this is correction, you expect this to drop. Okay? So again, same principle, same concept. If Euro pound is gonna fall, Okay, and uh, you again put this into a ratio. Okay, so if euro pound is gonna fall, and if you're looking to sell the euro or the pound, okay, then naturally you want to sell the euro because the euro here will this pair, this ratio will tell you that euro is likely gonna weaken more significantly than the pound. Okay, and of course, and vice versa. Okay, so again, if let's say today you're looking at euro yen and pound yen, okay, you want to select one pair to trade and you're not sure which one is going to give you that bigger opportunity, that bigger move. Okay, uh, one hint, one trick you can look at is to look at the euro pound ratio. Okay, so if euro pound chart here suggests more downside then between euro yen and pound yen, which one you want to sell, um, euro yen might be more attractive to consider compared to the pound yen. Okay, so that's the application part of it. Okay, um, pretty sure there are still, uh, okay, I'm not very, I don't actively trade the other commodities, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure that there's still some correlation out there in the financial market for those of you who are very active in other instruments and asset. Okay, um, this little ratio trick and technique uh, will help you as well, right? In terms of filtering it. Okay, but of course, um, the constant here, right? The thing that remains the same is um, the dollar, right? The dollar, because if you're looking at Euro dollar, Okay, and pound dollar, then um, you can look at euro pound ratio. If you're looking at gold against dollar, silver against dollar, then um, you can look at gold silver ratio. Okay, if your currency base is uh, another currency, for example, um, if you're looking at German DAX, right? German DAX is traded in euro, um, and you're looking at SP, which is traded in US. Now, of course, while the equities market are correlated, you can't just put this two ratio um, like that. Okay, so you need to have a common denominator, common currency or co common things that is being traded. Okay, so um, good. So I'm seeing that are uh, good, good. Uh, so let me see some of the questions you, you guys are putting in, all right? So um, great to have you guys joining in in this live. E, Jeffrey says, um, ah, okay, so usually this is, oh, so I think you're referring to the part where the news uh, appearing on headline, right? So that's that's something very important, okay? Uh, so again, if you start seeing headlines in the news, um, that it has happened, right? And don't be FOMO, don't don't be afraid of missing out and jump onto it because most of the time when the headline appears, um, it's likely going to reverse. It's going to go into the opposite direction, okay? Um, yeah, Jeffrey say he traded gold, okay? So yeah, I, I saw your video as well and uh, you decided to exit early, right? Uh, and I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the psychology component of holding on to trade as well, okay? But of course, if that's part of your plan, um, is a good trade, okay? You profited from it, it's a good trade. Uh, but of course, if uh, it's affected by psychology and then you cut yourself short, where you know initially you could have profited like maybe 10% from this trade, but you only profited 3% from this trade, okay? Then that 7% of difference is huge, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, okay? So, uh, right, Simon asked about Euro Pound. Yep, right, so Euro Pound can be applied, um, Australia, New Zealand, this currency pair can be applied in this concept as well, okay? Uh, good. Okay, I see another question for Simon asking about gold future expiry. Okay, if I'm not wrong, I think the gold futures is going to expire, I think today or tomorrow. Okay, the exact timing and date, I'm not very sure, um, but it's near. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's likely going to affect the price in the market a little bit here and there. Okay, um, but take note that, uh, you know, what I'm trading is on an ETF. Okay, so the price movement and the impact on it might be slightly different. Okay, so if today you're trading GLD, which is gold ETF, um, versus another trader who is trading gold futures directly, 
okay, versus another trader that is trading gold CFD, which is your XAU USD. Uh, the price movement might be slightly different, though the overall direction is more or less the same, okay, but the impact of it is slightly going to be different. Okay, uh, so yeah, definitely if the futures contract is going to be expiring soon, it's going to affect the prices in the market, right? Um, think about it. If today um, you are, you're holding on to this contract and it's going to expire soon, you will likely want to release it or, you know, when it's expired, you settle that contract, okay? Uh, and that might be the one of the factor or catalyst that you can see why um, this morning, okay, um, actually gold price tank quite a bit. Okay, gold price tank quite a bit. Okay, but again, um, I'm personally not worried about this. Okay, it's to me, it's a very small move. Okay, to me, it's a very small move because I'm looking at long term in this two position, right? I'm looking at going all the way, like for silver, I'm looking at it going another $20 to hitting it about $40, $48, um, that, that level, right? That's where my target is. So um, that's likely going to affect, again, you don't want to just jump into a trade because you see this, right? Because what can you do? You can easily just go back up and then do this. Okay. So uh, yeah, in short, the expiry of a futures contract is going to affect price, but in terms of the impact and the significance of it, uh, it might vary accordingly, right? Different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Jeffrey here says that, um, He's affected slightly, um, I think, the psychology component, right? Though it was because I'm thinking I'm risking 2R for 1.5R. Yeah, right. So um, so this part here is where let me proceed on to share with you a little bit in terms of uh, the psychology of holding on to trade. Okay, this is, this is very interesting because um, it's human nature, right? Um, today, if you take a trade and the trade go against you, then um, what you fall into you know, subconsciously, your psychology is going to start telling you, hey, hold on to the trade a little bit longer because uh, it might U-turn and then you might be able to close it at break even or even like turn from a losing to a winning trade, right? So when you're losing, when you're holding on to a losing trade, right, you'll be hoping, okay, hoping that it will U-turn. But when you're holding on to a winning trade, your whole psychology is going to be different. Your psychology will be thinking, well, now I'm making so much money. If I don't close it, I'm giving away profits, okay? And then you'll be in that, fear state as well. You are fearing that um, your profits will be lesser, you make less and things like that. Okay. Um, it's very common. It's natural. Okay. Um, but the thing here is as a trader, the first state or the first step to overcome this uh, is to re be aware of it. Okay. Unless you are aware of it, there's no way you can find a solution to it. Okay. So the first step here is to be aware of such thing happening, aware that um, you are having that psyche and emotions taking place, okay? So that's, the, that's very important, right? Being aware of it. And of course, the second thing that is able to help you in this, okay, is to have a trade plan, okay? Now, a trade plan is slightly different from a strategy per se. So strategy is really, you know, how I analyze the chart, how I actually execute it, how I enter a trade and things like that, uh, where I cut loss, et cetera. Okay, but the trade plan here is um, where, when I, when I say trade plan here is when you're taking that specific trade, what is the goal um, of the trade? What is the target of the trade? Is it going to be a short-term trade? Is it going to be a long-term trade? What's the plan? Okay, so over here, if you look at this, right, silver, when I took this trade, before I even put in my buy entry order, right, I already know where my target is going to be. What is the time frame was the duration of this trade, okay? Uh, in fact, I don't call this a trade. I would call this more like an investment idea because it's going to be long-term, okay? Uh, this one, I believe, I, if I recall correctly, right, I believe I share this silver analysis and silver trade I'm going to take like way before I took it. Uh, and it's on Facebook Live. Uh, those of you who actually saw it, you probably remember this, okay? Um, back then, I already shared that this is the level I'm looking at. Okay, for the eight dollars fifty cents, um, before I even take that trade. Okay, so psychologically, I know that this is not gonna happen in one week time. It's definitely not gonna happen in one month time or so. Okay, uh, it's gonna take longer. Why? Because you look at this from two thousand and eight for it to break all the way up towards for the eight dollars. It took two years, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Okay, um, somewhere early two thousand eleven, that's where it hit the high. 
Okay, so if this is gonna happen this time round, at least I need to give it minimally one year, right? It makes sense because back then it used two years to climb up. Um, for me right now, it might be faster. Okay, I, I would be happy if it takes way faster to reach my target. Um, but I'm prepared to give this idea, this, this trade here, to play out within the next one to two years time. Okay, so when I have that plan for this, I know that whatever is gonna happen, the up and down in the market is small, okay? Again, uh, if price from here, $22, drop back to $20, that $2 drop to a short-term trader is huge. But to me, because I'm looking at long-term, that $2 drop from $22 drop to $20 is small. And to me, that might be an opportunity for me to add on to another trade, okay? So uh, that's where trade plan helps in terms of psychology, okay? Uh, and I want you to just imagine, right? If today I didn't have that plan, I will be always thinking every day, right? I'll be looking at my PL and then I'll be thinking, should I exit now, okay? Um, should I, ex should I take my profits now? Uh, if not, you know, what happens if price comes back down and things like that? So if I don't have a plan, my thought process will always be around that, okay? The conversations that's gonna happen within me in my head is always gonna be, should I take profit now? Um, price is coming down. Should I now quickly close my trade and things like that, okay? So that trade plan is really, really important because again, market is not gonna go one way up, okay? Every time it makes a move, it needs to reset. Every time it makes a move, it needs to reset. Now this move is huge, okay? It definitely needs to make a reset. Whether is it gonna go sideways as a reset just like this and this, or is it gonna come down and make a bigger one like that? I don't know, okay? Nobody can tell you whether what is gonna develop, okay? But the key here is you need to have, you need to monitor it, okay? And of course you need to have the plan to do it. So the idea here is I can share with you a little bit. This is my trade plan, my idea, right? Um, of course, you need to see if this style, okay, this method fits you, this plan fits you, okay? So over here, if today's onwards and so SLV, right, silver starts to do this, I'll be very happy, okay, why I say that? Because what I know is that there's a high chance this will continue to the upside. So I'm very happy. And not only that, I know that if this happened, I can add on one more trade into it. Okay, so essentially I would have three trades on silver running up. Okay, so if this happened, okay, so if this happened. Now, what are the other possibility that it can happen? This can come down fast, okay, which means who knows, maybe today, tomorrow, it just comes down very strong, okay? And when that happens and it starts to do this, okay, then I know, okay, now I need to be a little bit more cautious because this tells me that there's a high chance it will continue to the downside. Maybe I want to exit my trade first, okay? So you see, it's not, it's not an emotional decision, it's a plan, okay? So I need to know if this happened, I'm gonna do this. If this happened, I'm gonna do this. So if I see something like this, then I will probably move my stop here and I'm happy to exit, take profit, okay? Um, exit those trades with profit and then I look for another opportunity, right? So these are the two likely scenario it can happen. Of course, this can also happen like that, okay? Which I'm happy also because if this happened, then I know the probability of this going up is very high and uh, I have another opportunity to add on a trade, okay? So uh, again, these are, these are parts uh, where I want you to be able to see, right? What we are doing as traders, we are just planning out this scenario that can happen, and then we execute it whenever a certain scenario hit according to our plan, okay? So for those of you who are maybe still looking for opportunities to be involved in like gold or silver and you're not in yet, uh, my suggestion to you, right, is that this one here, because it moves so much, is gonna do a rest. It's gonna do what we call correction, okay? This correction is gonna take at least maybe one to two weeks time, okay? I'm on the daily chart. Okay, so one to two weeks, today is Tuesday, okay? Um, maybe by mid-August, okay, this is gonna develop, okay? So in other words, um, you know, you, you have ample time to prepare yourself if you're looking for trading and investing in the gold and silver market, okay? Now is definitely not the best time to go in, okay? Um, I would say roughly give and take, you need to give it maybe about 
two to three weeks. Okay, so that's about mid August. Um, it will be a good time to come back to the chart, um, and look out for opportunities. Okay, to go in. Okay, whether is it right time by then? Um, we'll need to see. Okay, and uh, if I do spot another potential entry that I'm taking, uh, I I would I would likely do a Facebook live and share with you guys the ideas as well. Okay, so um, yeah. Okay, so that's that's really the idea of this video here. Um, yeah, not not really wanting to keep it too long. Okay, but the idea is really to share with you the understanding the top process behind um, why I took this SLV trade. Okay, so uh, again, all this are I think I posted on my Facebook as well. Um, you'll be able to go and check it out. Okay, um, let me. Okay, it's loading right. Okay, so over here, I think I posted it earlier today or yesterday. My internet is a bit slow. Okay, even Facebook is taking time to look. Oh my gosh. Right, so this is the one. Okay, um, so you can see two trades. Uh, one is the early of uh, May and the other one is the first late June, which is early July. Okay. Uh, so this is this is I would say this is definitely the trade of the year for me so far in 2020, 2020 okay? Um, because uh, currency market um, it's pretty slow for me since uh, this year, okay? A lot of ding dong, ding dong, and then of course when COVID happened back in March, right? Um, we saw huge volatility in the currency market. Um, but honestly, there's no way I would be able to catch that kind of volatility, right? One day it spikes up almost instantly. The next few days it came back down. Um, that kind of volatility is very difficult to trade. Um, and since then, you know, market, most of the market in the currency world um, has been ranging. Okay, just ding dong up and down. Um, not much of a clear trade that I can actually execute as well. Um, and, um, you know, I would say like silver right now is definitely going to go in as a 2020 trade of the year by far. Okay. Uh, and of course, um, you know, since we're here just to share with you also, uh, one of the trade ideas, or I would say potential trade I'm looking at is um, Aussie Yen. Okay, um, I'm of course looking at sell um, for, for this very simple reason, right? Um, so if you look at the daily, we have a potential double top here. Okay, so again, a double top formation means that high chance is going to go down, right? It's a reversal pattern. Uh, and of course, what I see over here is that this is also a pattern that I recognize as a high chance it can come down, right? So not only a double top, but also an, a wave pattern. Okay, on the four hour, I can see that this is a strong impulse push to the downside, okay, which is good, which means the momentum is to the downside. Um, and if this is forming a pattern that I recognize, then again, high chance this will go down, okay? So technical analysis is really all about um, patterns, right? Be familiar with what tends to repeat itself over and over again, and then as traders, we just exploit it, that's all, okay? So over here, uh, if you look at the lower time frame, the four, one hour time frame, okay, this pattern here is really, really clean and clear, okay? And these are the patterns that, um, for me, I take it every time I see it, okay? Now, it's not going to be like 100% sure win thing, um, but every time I see this formation, this pattern happening on a chart, um, I know there's a high chance this will drop, okay? Which means uh, I'm looking to take a sell trade, okay? So, uh, most of the time, in terms of statistics, right, this kind of pattern, this kind of setup um, give us about 60 to 70% accuracy, Okay, but of course, there's still that 30%, 40% that you might still get it wrong. What I mean is that from here, price can still just do this, right? And then go up, right? So there's about 30, 40% chance that that can happen. About 60 to 70% chance this will come down, okay? So as traders, again, we are not really, you know, one thing to be 100% certain. The key here is as long as you have an edge, right? You have a slight advantage over the market, um, you have the probability, the statistics working for you, okay? Uh, it benefits you then by all means, just manage your trade, take it um, over a period of time, over a certain duration, okay? Statistics will play out. It's a number gain and um, that's where you actually profit from it, okay? So um, hope today's sharing here has been helpful, okay? Giving you some insights into the top process, um, the how, the why, um, more on the silver trade itself. 
right? So good to see you guys uh, in the live session. If you really like this kind of video, um, do just give it a thumbs up, right? Like on this video, um, let me know in the comments what you, what you enjoyed most in today's sharing, okay? Uh, if you benefit on, on, on it. Okay. Uh, and uh, also let me know if there are some of the other topics related that you'd like to hear from me on Facebook Live. Um, do let me know in the comments as well, right? So from there, I'll be able to have more ideas, more content um, to share with you guys. Good, right? So um, that's all from me. Um, have a great trading week ahead, right? Today is only Tuesday, so um, there's still ample time of more opportunities um, available in the market. Okay, so I'll see you guys um, in the next video. Right.